So I just want to make a quick pro, uh, quick YouTube about what I've been doing with the G1 X4 in this case. So my approach is to get Wireshark for Windows. I prefer Linux, but I have a Windows machine here. USB PCAP if it's not already installed, and I copied it into the Wireshark X cap. Uh, but I don't actually use that, which is a bit dumb of me. Um, then MIDI ops you need, or something like that. Obviously your, your zoom pedal, and I'm using a G1 X4. Start your trace open the Guitar Lab app, mess around with it, Don't, try to keep the capture not too long. Uh, a couple of reasons, and we'll go into that in a moment. I, I captured a few megabytes and that was a bad idea. Then you process the results, look for strings in midi aux having first disconnected your G1X4 from the Guitar Lab, uh, and then you might hit on some gold, yeah? Um, so let's have a look at what we mean here. So you start the traces admin, and in my case, it's Wireshark, so uh, and my USB PCAP is upper directory, and when you run it, it opens a new directory, uh, a, new, a new window rather as admin. And it says, oh, have a look. And here you see my zoom is on the channel one. So I click number one to monitor. And then I tell it I want to put it in zoom g1x.pcap. Open the Guitar Lab, exercise it a little bit. I captured 1 million, which which is not big. But when the algorithm I'm doing Python is not sensible. So um. Uh, it slows it down, and I would suggest you capture much less than that. Once you've exercised it a bit, you control C this, and then I copy the results file to another directory so I can process it um, as a lower user. And in the first thing, so look at Wireshark, and this is good because it can help you see the direction of the travel of the USB MIDI. Um, and you know, it's great, but it doesn't understand all the traces. So I did some hacks with Python, uh, and these are approximate. So please don't rely on them to work reliably. They're there just to get a, a brief idea. Uh, and then you test some strings in MIDI aux having first disconnected from the Guitar Lab. So let's have a quick look at what this looks like in uh, in practice. When you've got your trace, the Wireshark, uh, oops, sorry, looks like this sort of stuff. I don't know how to make this bigger. And so it knows about the chit chat on the USB. I'm not that interested in that but it knows about aspects of the um, USB. And you see, you get like F0, 7. So you see it's highlighting three bytes at a time, then a single byte, and then three bytes. I didn't know why it did that. I looked on the internet and I found um, some interesting articles, specifically the MIDI standard. And it tells you that it's got this cable number and a code number. And it's like a, a cut down version of what you would normally send on MIDI for the um, for the data, but you see most of the time it means that there's three bytes. So a four means that there's three bytes left and SysX is continuing. So as a thundering hack, I just said, okay, every time you get an F0, count three bytes and then remove the byte, another three bytes, re remove every fourth byte basically. So that's a thundering hack and you should do better than that, but this is a good start. Um, so let's get that out of the way. And so I open up a Python prompt and basically what I do is say, read in the zoom pcap file as binary read binary load the buffer in start up a new empty tuple you're not in sysx uh you're starting at the first byte and you haven't seen any inputs yet so go through the buffer um incrementing once and every thousand print out you've seen a thousand uh and then if you see F0, which is 240 in, in decimal, then you're in the, in the sysx, so write that value to this buffer. And J is one to say the beginning byte. And otherwise, if you see 247, that's F7, you're out of sysx and write the, the, the byte. This isn't quite true because you can get F0 as part of the um, USB traffic. So I need to do something better than this, but this is a good start. And basically, every fourth byte, if you're not, if you're not, if the modulo arithmetic of the J modulo four is not zero, then write the byte out. Otherwise, don't. And this takes quite a bit of time in in uh, to do one million rows. I guess it's the tuple. I, I don't know. Modulo arithmetic shouldn't be that slow. Uh, it shouldn't be printing anything. So it has to be the tuple that's taken the time. But I don't know. And so what we've done is we've taken in the raw output from the PCAP and we've tried to find F0 to F7 strings approximately. Now we open another file, this time zoom sysx text as binary, right binary, 
and you write this out as a iota bytes and this prints a load of ones but it's fine so once you've got that file uh, then you can read that into um, hxd which i quite like so hxd looks like this and it gives you the the raw binary text and it gives you the strings and what i do then is i copy this into gvim because i quite like gvim and i tell it that every um f7 needs to be replaced by a new line the f7 and a, and a new line a slash r and so now i got a series of strings so this sort of string here uh, maybe i can make this a bit bigger uh, this sort of string here um seems to be related to a little chit chat that says hello am i there so this is a generic am i there and uh, i think 6e is the number that you get for um the zoom g1x for and there'll be different numbers and this sort of says yeah i'm there uh, then every so often you get some big data back so let's see what happens if we take this string because uh, as i said we've we've now disconnected the zoom from the application and we've started midiox and in midiox we're saying hey can you please look at the zoom and would you please show me the midi event so now somewhere should be a sysx um file so let's just see if this is the same thing i'm about to paste in yeah it is so we paste this thing and then we say okay send and receive sysx and boof back comes 888 characters okay so now if we control a this and we copy these um into hxd again so let's open up hxd let's open up a new thingy paste insert when we look up here you see it says the rand randy train is that right i don't know a randy train whatever the hell that is uh, this is 80 sounds and if i go through my a uh, randy train a randy train is number 17. so i don't know if this 7 is 17 who knows uh okay let's try and make this um it's going to be hex so 10 will be 20 a uh, 16 rather let's see what happens if we send that send sysx oh send receive sysx uh no we don't care about the changes 880 eight, eight bytes come back okay so let's do a control a again control copy let's go into the hxd let's open a new file let's insert this and uh, what have we got now octave solo well what did i say uh 10 is 16 uh 10 16. let me have a look for easy and find octave solo uh oh that's bad it's crashed that was me moving my cable by the way um yeah so it's basically it it, it will crash in a minute but it hopefully come back so what we found is an octave solo um which was another a, a, a pattern okay my cable seems to have busted good time for it to break in the middle of a demo but you get the idea what we have is a series of strings that have come back and we test them out some of them we could we could we can eliminate these because these are little chit chats and this is the response it gives but this one is returning the patch data and you can see that because there's a lot of cruft that comes back some of them i prepared earlier will be the ones that modify a specific parameter in the front panel um, and those ones are of interest because what i really want to do is to try and control this thing with an embedded processor and all i'm trying to do is to scavenge the traffic to find out what is happening uh, i mean maybe this all exists on the net somewhere i know there are some programs that are doing cool things with it um, but this is what i'm up to and actually this will be good for some other techniques i have another midi keyboard with no driver so i will be playing this thing and as i get more i will publish as i find stuff but all i want to do is to use a standard arduino or um tinsy to to write out or a digi stump to write out midi stuff so that's what i'm up to hopefully it was fairly straightforward uh, the steps can be followed just keep the traffic down so it doesn't take so long to process